Hello everybody, I'm gonna get right to it. I'm bringing you a dream that my dad had on January 13th, 2023. Now, I'm gonna give you some background on my dad. He started having these dreams that are different than just his regular nighttime dreams. Uh, he had started having them around 2020. And um, sometimes he goes through a series where he dreams several in a row and they're just, I can't explain them. He can't explain them other than they're just a different kind of dream. And he is compelled to tell somebody about it. Now, I've been sitting on this for a while because I wanted to wait for God to, like, nudge me. Because I've kind of been just churning out this these videos and, and grinding. And I just, I just don't think that's resonating with the spirit as well as it could be. So anyway, I, I just got back from shopping in the town next two hours and uh, I was putting away my groceries and I just thought, okay, all right, y'all, I'm bringing it. It's time. It was just this huge nudge. So um, some of this is obvious what it means and some of it is like, wow, uh, if that's what that means, then we've got some serious thinking to do about Jesus. Everything I bring you uh, is meant to focus on Christ. It is not above and beyond what's in Holy Scriptures in the Bible. So there's a great sense of humility in what I'm bringing you. Uh, so, January 13th, 2023. My dad, 82 years old, dreamt this. He said he, himself and three men stood out on a manicured lawn. Ahead of us was a uh, a row of like cedar break trees, like cedar trees that break that keep the wind from coming across the prairie so hard. So just cedar trees, we call them cedar break trees, a line of trees. Uh, they were well trimmed and the base was of these trees uh, were clean and clear and it was a nice setting. There was a building behind the trees, uh, and the trees were kind of a U-shape around the building. As the dream goes on, you'll see that. And this building was kind of in the center. So my dad and these three men began to walk around the row of trees to the back side of the building, around the U. Kind of like this picture here. Um, the building was in the middle and the trees were around it and there was a street in front of it. So they began to walk around the back side and when they got to the back of the trees, there was a row of another row of trees still there, but they were in worse condition. And the lawn was very unkept and there were weeds all in this grass and <clears throat> the weeds growing up under the trees and a man joined us and he my dad and those three men and we we told him and he brought us a hand hoe so they told him bring us a hand hoe to hoe the weeds and this man brought brought it um we need to clean this side so it looks nice like the other side uh, it, uh, uh, we, so they chopped weeds and they had, um, the, the, the blade on the hoe was a broad blade. Um, it wasn't narrow. It was a broad bladed hoe. And the man in front of my dad suddenly had a small monkey come out of the tree and jump on his back. And it scared him, but he got the monkey off and went in the trees and uh, they were working in the front of the trees uh, close to the street in front of all of it there was a street and they were working on the trees right next to the street and as they were working under the trees they found a bucket of some sort and it had like you know dead leaves and and uh, lawn trash in it and um, they thought, well, we will put uh, the bucket in the street and someone will get it. So they started putting all the stuff that they were 
uh, cleaning out from under those trees. They started putting all of that trash, the dead leaves, the weeds, um, in the middle of the street. Then the monkey came back and it jumped on my dad's back. It wasn't threatening at all. It was very gentle. And we noticed, they noticed that the weeds around, that there were weeds around close to the building that was in the center. So we went to hoe them and the monkey was still on my dad's back. And they looked in the windows and there were children watching out of the windows of this building and they were enjoying the monkey. Uh, and it, it my and the monkey uh, put its head on my dad's shoulder and fell asleep. So my dad kept chopping weeds, and the monkey was on his back with his head on his shoulder asleep. And uh, it felt good uh, uh, about so. My dad felt good about the work, and so. Um, what they did was they all got in a car and he still had the monkey on his back and as they drove uh, they they noticed the drivers that they passed would point at the monkey and they noticed the monkey on my dad's back and that was the other drivers on the road and one driver said like yelled out his window you need to get rid of the monkey on your back so, in the dream, they stopped at a field, and someone was there, and they took the monkey off of my dad's back. And it was dark and evening, it was dusk, and um, there were two or three of them walking across the field, and someone said, have you noticed the green tail of the comet in the sky? One of the people in the field said, have you noticed the green tail of the comet in the sky? And we saw it. They looked up into the sky and saw the comet. Uh, and it was beautiful. And we, there was a woman there. And we asked if she had seen the green comet. So they were looking up at the comet. They looked back down. A woman was there. And they said, have you seen the comet? She looked at it. And when they all looked back up at the comet, it was a lot closer. And she said, yes, I heard it won't return for another 50,000 years. And when my dad looked at the comet one more time after she said that, it was so close. The comet, the tail, everything was so close he could actually see the waves of matter in the tail portion. It was super close and then it just disappeared on the horizon. And that was the end of the dream. So, you know, I think there's a lot of interpretation to these, this dream. I actually think it's a lot like uh, Christ's parable about, about the, the wheat and the tares or the wheat and the weeds growing up together and then being separated during harvest. Um, I think there's a lot of similarities to that, even that the believers will shine in the end when Christ comes back. So I think that's uh, a lot. Uh, I mean, that's a scriptural parallel to this dream. Uh, I think that um, the 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 street in front of the building i'm going to show you all this picture one more time the street was right here in front of the building and i think that street represents like the threshing floor of where um we're going to be separated the the goats and the sheep the weeds and the wheat um y'all um the weeds represent the evil <clears throat> and one of the men, I, I forgot to tell you all this, but there was a, when he was, when they were hoeing the weeds, uh, my dad remembered, he said, as he was leaving the side that was manicured, and 
he kept seeing or lead the, the side that had the weeds in it he kept seeing sprouts of weeds coming up right before his very eyes and a man said to him that was with him make sure you put your hoe at the root and pull it up hard so there were instructions on how to get the weed at the root and I think that um, the evil in our world today is um, overwhelming and growing. The darkness is getting darker very quickly, but I think the light is getting lighter. <laughs> I truly do. And I think we're going to see a lot of amazing, um, amazing things, just like that comet was. The, the comet... I wonder, is it the coming of Christ? Y'all help me interpret this dream. I'm not sure about all of it. <clears throat> I think the monkey on his back is the responsibility that we have as believers. That while we're still here, we we work, we farm. <laughs> we work the field. I mean, if you live around where we live, I mean, we have cotton here. Um, and... You know, sometimes, well, you chop cotton. I, I mean, my husband chopped cotton when he was in high school to earn money. It's a low, it's a low level uh, labor. Uh, a lot of immigrants that come here are chop cotton. You'll see them out in the field. Uh, they're in the rows chopping weeds to to make sure the field is really clean. Um, because the, the roots, you don't want the roots from the weeds taking the water that needs to go to the plant. And so the monkey on his back, I think, is just that responsibility to make sure your row is clear. <laughs> your row being your life. Make sure you get rid of the weeds that are in your, the evil that's in your life. And you're going to have to, you can't just pull it up and not get the root. So you have to get to the root of the matter. And um, we have that responsibility. That monkey is on our backs. Now, uh, I, I'm not sure about the comment about the 50,000 years. There won't be another one for another 50,000 years. I'm not sure what that means, y'all. Um, I think 50 in Strong's Concordance means rescue by God rescued by God is that right uh, in the Hebrew um, confirm that in comments y'all I'm so open um, but I think this dream was definitely like I said January 13th 2023 and, I, and it's February 1st today 2023 so I've been sitting on it for a couple of weeks praying about it wondering if I should even post it here because I've kind of gone through a questioning of whether I should even be doing this or not. Um, so I bring it to you and I put it to you and you can pray about it. If it resonates with you, then man, you need to start letting God get rid of the weeds in your life. And I think there's going to be a day, because he looked at the comet, comment, I'm sorry, comet, because my dad looked at the comet three times, and each time it was closer, I think that means, I'm not sure that doesn't represent the coming of Christ. I don't know. Always be ready, no matter what. Um, no matter what happens, we need to be ready for the return of Christ. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to that. If you're not right with God, if you're not following Christ, then you have time still. Acknowledge that you are a sinner and you can't make yourself right. Only Jesus can through his grace, through his grace and uh, through our love and faith. That's how we respond to that. And then follow him and learn his life and learn his teaching. It's a good life. Being a believer in Jesus Christ, a Christian, is an, an adventure. It's peaceful. It's joyful. And I hope, I hope you reach out and uh, 
get together with like-minded people. That's all I have. Today was the day to bring that dream to YouTube. And it hit me while I was putting away my groceries. I stopped. I'm sitting here in my kitchen. I stopped everything. And it's, all right, Father, I'll bring it now. So that's all I have. I hope it resonates. And please, if you have something in this dream that, um, like, Gina, oh my gosh, that's what that means, and I didn't, I don't know, then please teach me. Please teach me. Um, all right. This is Gina Lima Charlie. I'm out.